Hey everybody, this is Brett, and today I'm making another solar cooker. And I say another because I haven't made one for a long time, but I did about 13 or 14 years ago. And they came out all right for my first ones, you know, I didn't really know what I was doing, but they worked to a degree. And uh, I've had a little bit of success, so. But now, after having watched videos, and seen pictures and read things. I've educated myself to the point of where I know that I can build a really good one. And I want it to be all natural. And, uh, you know, I've seen some cardboard solar cookers on YouTube. Check those out. And they're pretty cool. But I'd like mine to be kind of like a lot stronger. You know, like instead of, uh, instead of, well, uh, I shouldn't say the straw house because I want a straw house sometime, someday. <laughs> but you know the story of the three little pigs, how they made the straw house and then the brick house and then the titanium one. But um, I would like mine to be made out of wood and specifically <clears throat> non-toxic plywood. It doesn't have any formaldehyde or toluene, there's some various chemicals that can be in plywood that make my throat close off whenever I'm working with the plywood, you know, cutting it on the table saw and I'm breathing that and uh, so I can tell when I'm allergic to stuff. And so I bought this plywood and it's half inch thick plywood and uh, this is not put together yet, I just put it up there so you could see. Okay. So, the base is 21 by 16 half inch thick plywood. And then the back is 10 inches tall, so it's 21 by 10. And then the sides are 16, of course, long, by 10 inches tall on the back and 7 inches tall on the front. And then I've added these little wood pieces to the side for extra surface areas to give it strength. And the screws I just used for gluing purposes and tomorrow I'll take them out. I'm also going to put some more of this that I just, I just ran on the table saw. Um, I'm going to put that in the corners for strength. So the front piece is 21 by 7. And see those spots on there? That was from like last year we had a lot of rain and it, the, the plywood got moldy here in the garage. Don't keep plywood in a place where it can mold in North Carolina. <laughs> but it's all going to be painted anyway, so that's not a big deal. Okay, so. Yeah, my next thing is to put this all to, well, I'm probably, I'm going to put some quarter inch plywood on the insides of these. And then I'm going to stuff insulation in between the two. Okay, and that'll be the next video. I'll show you that later. But um, then I'm going to plan, on, I'll put, a, put some natural rubber some uh, latex rubber on the top here made out of that jade yoga mat material that I make some of my other products with and you might use maybe some silicone or you might buy some some liquid latex and create a seal of sorts like that without the yoga mat material mix use some may, maybe linen mixed with the liquid latex and put it right on the top edge of there and what that'll do is give the glass a good seal. And you'll want to maybe take some kind of, get your, get your glass piece and put some kind of a, a, an oil on the edge of it. And then maybe run some silicone or whatever around the edge and then press it down onto it so that it makes a perfect seal. I might even do it that way, but we'll see. This is the first clip and I'm going to make some more clips for when I continue this project. Okay, so it's been a week since I last made a video for this project and I'll show you what I've done in that last week. I put 
four layers of cardboard in here as the insulation. That made this level flat all the way around. Okay, and then the next thing I needed to do was make some metal. I want to make the inside metal. So I bought this sheet galvanized steel at Lowe's and then I took a DeWalt sander and sanded the inside of it so that when I paint it this, the paint will stick really good. I also bought some natural paint. This is the primer for it. You got to put primer on first and then this is the black paint. It is zero VOC and I bought it at Earth Paints. Oh no, no, no. I bought it at Build It Naturally here in Asheville. Then I made these sides. There's the other one. And I folded the edges. It's really fairly easy to work with. I folded the edges and I did that just on the edge of my, my bench here. I fold, left enough over the edge and then I just pushed it down with my hand and made it just the right size to fit perfectly in there. And then this fits right inside of there and I'm going to have to do it with two hands so we'll see if I can. fits really well. Now, if I had the right machine, I could have these edges folded and tight, and that would have been better. But I don't have the right machine to do that, so I'm just going to screw those on. It'll leave a little bit of a jagged edge, but um, I've cut the edges so that they're below the wood slightly. So that shouldn't be a problem. Additionally, before I did all of that, in order to get this edge here, the top, so that it is dead flat, I made a sanding board. This is a sanding board and it's on some three quarter inch thick plywood. And it's six pieces of sandpaper glued to the top of it and I checked the top of this with my my straight edge and it's pretty flat and I'm a luthier guitar builder and so I shook that with this straight straight edge which is you know good to zero zero three three one thousandths and it's pretty flat so then I took the box and flipped it upside down on top of that sanding board and worked it and worked it and worked it until the top of that was dead flat because I ordered a piece of glass to go on top of it from a glass company. It's not going to have a hinge I don't think. <clears throat> it's just going to sit flat on the top of some rubber that I put on the top of that edge and we'll see how that does as far as sealing it goes. So that's as far as I've gotten so far. Oh, one other thing. I had some quarter inch plywood and I made the reflector material out of that. These are for the sides and this wider is for the front and back. And then I ordered the mylar which is the reflective material to go on top of it. It's not sticky back mylar. That's kind of hard to find in, this, in the amount that I wanted to get. So I'm going to have to get some kind of a glue to glue it down and hopefully that will be non-toxic, but we'll see. <laughs> so thanks for, we're not done with the video, so I'll make another one in like a week or so. Hey y'all, this is Brett and I finished the solar oven. It's been a lot of work. I've been working on it for about at least six weeks now, I think. And there it is. It's pretty much natural. 
other than the Velcro that holds these together. That's how I adjust the, the uh, reflectors. And the reflectors will blow in the wind, and ho but hopefully they won't go anywhere. I don't think they will because they're bolted on. See the bolt here? That's a thumb bolt. That's a thumb bolt, and on the back is a, a wing nut. And they're secured with a piece of oak that's hinged to the box. And there's some extra oak here for strength. So, and then one thing that I didn't anticipate is that to be able to take the glass off, you have to release one of the sides or it's too tight. So you just release one of the sides down and then you can lift this out, slide it out, as you can see. Now, the glass has two handles. I had to have them drill holes in the glass. And each hole drilled cost ten dollars. Ten bucks to drill a hole in glass, quarter inch thick. And so then on the top here is natural latex rubber from a yoga mat. All the way around. And so it seals. And uh, so there you go. Um, today we're not going to be doing any solar cooking though. <laughs> not today. But maybe tomorrow. I've got some really nice pots that I had specifically made for solar cooking a long time ago. And I've got some iron pots. It'll work great. And uh, the first thing that I did was I figured out what size to make this. And I didn't make it any bigger than I needed to to be able to put three pots, three of my pots, in there. And so, uh, without the reflectors, it comes out, it gets about 190. And, uh, oh, and you'll, you can see there that I don't know how to put mylar on wood very good. <laughs> it is very wrinkly. But what we'll do is we'll just consider the wrinkles art. You know how some people cut holes in their jeans to be stylish? <laughs> well, we like the wrinkles. It's cool. So thanks for joining me and um, yeah, I'm going to be taking this to an eco village. Dig on that. I got accepted to go and do a work exchange program, visitor thing, at an eco village in the middle of freaking nowhere. <laughs> a commune, but it's not technically a commune. It's technically an eco village because they don't share income and they don't share everything like people in a community do. Everyone's just like sharing everything with everyone. And you've got to have to have a pretty big heart to do that, huh? <laughs> Unless you're one of the poor people there, then you're like, yeah, this is cool. <laughs> so anyways, um, yeah, I'm going to be taking my solar oven there. And uh, I'm sure it's going to work great. It should get to over 300. Oh, and incidentally, I don't think that I want the full corners to be all reflective, too, because as it is, it gives me the ability to adjust these at different angles. You see, they're, they're held on there by Velcro pieces. And so I can just adjust the angle, and all you have to do is look at the reflection of the sun and get these on the exact angle that you like. 
And there you go, you got the maximum reflection directly into the box. Thanks for joining me.